Okay, thanks. Uh, so I'm going to try and uh, give a quick demonstration of a useful function that I've recently started to use. Um, so the idea is uh, to create reproducible examples. Um, people that are probably familiar with programming already understand this, but when you're new, it's a bit more tricky uh, to understand what the purpose is. So uh, the point of reproducible examples are you do it when you have a problem where you're having a, you've got an error or you're you're trying to do something in your code and it's not doing what you want and you want someone to help you. So that's the main thing. You need some help. At that point, you want to uh, make it as easy for somebody else to help you as possible. So uh, often, like, you want to just say, look, here's my function. This is what it's giving me. Why is it not working? And then you end up in a long conversation with someone saying, well, what does your data look like? Or what does this look like? Or, and oh, I can't reproduce your error. And you, and you end up losing a lot of your time, a lot of their time, and you probably don't get to the solution because one of you gets fed up with the conversation. Um, so there is a package that helps you do this, uh, and it is called Reprex. Um, actually, I wanted to just start by showing you the first one I attempted to do. So you don't want to see my diary. What you do want to see is here. <clears throat> so I, I remember doing this. This is, this is the second ever uh, issue I posted on GitHub for a package called Viz Network. Um, and I remembered it recently and I thought back to it and I cringed a little bit at, at the thought of what I wrote to try and get the person who wrote this package to reproduce it. Um, now I've looked at it, it's not as bad as I remember, but it's still not great. So I gave this person this code and a description uh, of what the problem was. And I've also attached an Excel file which allows them to load the data. So I guess there's a few problems with this. Like ideally what you, the aim is for them to just grab the code, copy it, paste it into their R environment and then run it and then they'll be able to see the problem. That, that's the aim. But I have given them an Excel file, and at the beginning here, I write about uh, kind of reading in two CSV files. I'm not going to open the Excel file now, but I think I remember it being two tabs with these names. So there, there's already like a few minutes this person's going to have to spend creating the CSV files from the Excel file. Also, there's a lot of like unnecessary code here um which probably have nothing to do with the error i was getting or the issue i was trying to raise so um actually i should have probably spent a bit more time reducing all this code to as few lines as possible just to replicate what i was seeing um and on that note actually a lot of the time that you go through to make a reproducible example, you actually find the solution to your problem. I think probably more than 50% of the time I've tried to create a reproducible example leads to me solving the problem as well. Um, so I do recommend going through this process if you're stuck with something. Um, so I'm going to um, show you the package now. So the package is called Reprex. Uh, it's not loaded here, but you'd install it with your normal processes, Reprex. I won't run that because I've already got it installed. Um, and essentially, what it, I think it's got a few functions. I've only learned one, um, which is coming useful. But I was having this, pro I'm having this problem here, which I put on Slack for help on the NHSR Slack, and I'll just show it to you. I'm going to run these lines of code and I've got this table here. So I made this table up and it was meant to represent uh, a, a similar problem that I was facing on SQL. Um, so I've got two columns here. I've got groups, so uh, group IDs one to five. And within each group, I've got uh, a letter. 
And what I wanted to do was only fill, I wanted to filter this table down to only those groups that didn't contain a C in them. So as you can see, uh, there's a C in uh, group one. So I want that to be taken out. Group two doesn't have a C in it. So I want that to remain, et cetera. Um, so far, straightforward. So I developed this code here, this line of code, which works. It's dplyr. And that gives me exactly what I want, which is great. My problem was that this bit of code wasn't working on a SQL database, which uh, using the dbplyr package. Um, and so I had to create this bit of code to replicate the error I was getting. Um, so the way to do this is you write, you have a connection string, I'm then copying that table that I've created up here into that uh, connection string, which is so that database, which is in memory, which I do with this line of code. Um, and then this is how I uh, reference the table. So the table's been called group letters. I reference the table with this. And that's kind of the top 10 rows of the table um, that we looked at before. And then I'm applying this filter function, which is uh, hopefully identical to what I've done above. Um, and I get an error. So the translation of this filter function in using dbplyr hasn't worked correctly. Um, so I spent time creating this example, which is great. And I can now copy and paste it into Slack or Stack Overflow or GitHub. Um, so I've gone through the process of making this reproducible. So, and then the way to check this is to use this package. So I'm deleting everything from memory. Um, and I'll show you the add-in way of using it because it's a bit, bit more interactive. But what you do is select all, and then I copy it first. Then I can explain something else. So it's now on my clipboard because I've pressed Control C. Um, and now it says, where is the reprex source? So I say it's on my clipboard. Where do I want to paste the output? So uh, in this case, it's a problem with dbplyr. So I want to potentially raise it as an issue on GitHub. So I'll keep that selected. Um, I'm going to tick append session info because uh, I'll explain what that does in a second. And then this is already ticked preview HTML. And what I do is I press render. And what this does is in the background, it creates an R markdown document and it renders this file, which I'm not going to look at because it also then uh, says this, your reprex output is on the clipboard. So what I can do next is I can go to the dbplyr issues page and I can create a new issue. Um, and I will, it's a bug report or a feature request. I'll get started. And here it asks for a reprex. So I would just copy highlight that and then press paste. Um, and it pastes a reprex into my issue. And I can see that with preview. So it says brief description of problem. I would write some description. And then the reprex here, uh, it, the preview of the reprex shows the code that I've uh, try to run in Markdown and it will come up with all the errors. So, and it shows the response to uh, the code that I've run as well. Um, and so you can hit, see here at the end, it gives you the error that was created when I ran the, when I demonstrated by running it line by line. At the end, you've got this little session info tab, which is because I ticked that box about session in, uh, to show the session info. And that gives the package maintainer, uh, a view of what version of R I was using, what my operating system was, et cetera, et cetera. And then all the packages and their versions that I've got loaded. So they can now uh, at least understand my environment to be able to recreate it, to understand whether it's an issue with how I'm working or whether it's an issue with the package itself.
Um, very simple. There's other ways of doing it. So uh, you can, I'll just do one more example. Uh, so if I highlight that all again and copy it with Control and C, then I can just type in reprex, reprex, if you prefer to do it, in command line, and then it does exactly the same. It doesn't include session info by default, so you'd have to put that as an example. Oh, yeah, here's, so yeah, you can uh, put session info equals true to make it happen. Um, and then you could go through the same process. Um, so I think I'm going to stop there, but I just encourage people to make reproducible examples because it will increase the chance of someone helping you um, because you've made it easier for them. Now the person should be able to just take this code, copy it, paste it, reproduce the error, um, and then either update their package or be able to suggest a workaround or something like that. Um, cool. I won't say any questions as it's a recording, but happy to talk to anyone about it in the future if they have questions. <laughs>